bad behavior, part one. As far as this show goes, there is no excuse. Ladies and gentlemen, Sandra Bernhardt. Oh, you have a little, I got a little, I got a little, yeah, little thing. No, you just do this, do this. <laughs> Please knock my tooth out. Back yeah, there, but... uh, was it anything Sorry, to do with it? might enjoy it. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's, a, it's something I've been wanting to do, like on stage for a really long time. Uh huh. You waited till 1.35 these... in the morning when it was safe. It's these B propolis throat lozenges. And whenever I'm in rehearsal with my band, we have like this ongoing joke of like the, you know, <laughs> Cliché, blacked out tooth, easy laugh. Uh-huh. Gets a big yawk from the kids. Yeah. And I thought, why not with you? You know what? Mm, it tastes was... good, too. Mm, <laughs> love that. I love to swallow that extra tooth. <laughs> it was a good look. <laughs> an interesting look, indeed. Uh, how Cheers. are you? Cheers. I'm quite well. Tally-ho, I understand you, uh, you spent your summer vacation in uh, beautiful Nantucket. Hmm. What does one do in Nantucket in summer? Oh, uh, one avoids going to the grocery store because there's a lot of, like, you know, blonde. Kind of, people look like a lot like you, actually. <laughs> who, on mo who on moss kind of frightened me a little bit, you know? Mm. And I'm sure just singularly I frightened them. So it was kind of a mutual thing. Maybe you would have felt better if I had been missing a tooth or something. <laughs> no, I'm okay one-on-one -on -one with, with you types, but no, I'm just kidding. No, what do you mean? You get, you, is it oh, a waspy yeah. crowd out there, yeah, Sandra? Yeah, it's extreme. I was, I was shocked because I went out at the beginning of the summer and stayed at a B&B, &B, a bed and breakfast. Uh-huh. Had a blast and thought, you know, I'm going to come back with some friends and rent a big house. Yeah. So we got there. First of all, it's a big scam because they, they literally thousands of dollars to rent a house for a week. And I figured, you know, it's my one vacation this summer and I really wanted to chill out. Why does everybody want to go there, though? I guess because it just has that reputation. It's Nantucket. It's beautiful, mm -hmm. you know. But then you get out in the, like kind of the dead of the summer, and there's everybody there, and you get to your house, and it's you know on a bay. I hate bays. Mm -hmm. Bays are like kind of dead, like that kind of dead air. Uh -huh. They said, "Oh, it's on the water." They didn't tell me it was on a bay. <laughs> so I got all freaked out. I was like crying and throwing things. So we had to move to the middle of the island. There was no water, but at least it was a beautiful view of like. Uh -huh. Kind of a, you know, open field and water on one side, water on the other. I'm, I'm doing a great PR job for Nantucket. <laughs> yeah, you're selling it hard. Yeah, well, they're not going to be rushing to invite me back. And what, what is the, the problem or the contention with a, a, a bay? Because in the summer, bays are extremely still. Uh -huh. And they have, like, boats on them. And uh -huh. there's, like, oily water. Oh, I'm going to rush into the bay and lounge on my, you know... <laughs> <laughs> sailboat. I just don't like bays. And uh, I, I didn't realize how much I really didn't like them until this summer. Uh -huh. And now I'm like on an anti-bay campaign. <laughs> <and> it... <laughs> so it's bays in Nantucket it's we want to stay away yeah, from. Well, I would go back to Nantucket and stay in the B&B &B again. Well, you, you said that the people uh, in the grocery stores, they treat you a little strange over there? Well, you know, they're like, they, they don't want to be uncool, so they just kind of stare and like, uh, Now, why do they do that to you? <laughs> Well, I think they've always, people have always stared at me since I was a kid, because mm -hmm. I don't, certainly don't fit into that. What are you laughing, cackling about, I feel like a hand. <laughs> where, where was that guy when I was doing the video log? <laughs> Apparently, he had, you know, <laughs> just came to life. Love your mugs here. Hey, thank Love you very the much. later mugs. Hey, thanks. They don't even say anything mm -mm. on them. That's what you get at 135, friends. What would you say the uh, most misunderstood thing is uh, uh, about you from these types of people? Probably that I'm a totally aggressive person, that I only want to, like, you know, stir up trouble. Mm -hmm. But I do, I, you know, I think people forget that everybody has that vulnerable side to them. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs a little, uh, little love. Yeah. You know? Speaking of uh, uh, stirring up trouble, uh, what's going on with Tom and Roseanne? <laughs> Don't know. I don't think anything's going on with them anymore. It's, it's done. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's pretty much over. Uh -huh. Can you give us any good gossip about that? Because these folks are just dying for a little something. <laughs> I have to really dig deep. Um, Howard Stern can, can get a gossip out of me. So. Uh, come on. No, I'm, I, I, honestly, I have not. I didn't do the show the last part of the year, of the last season, because I was in New York working on my album. So I, I really wasn't around when all the craziness was happening. Uh -huh. So, and she was hard to get a hold of during that period, so I couldn't really milk her for anything. I, I, I tried. <laughs> 
I keep thinking it's all, gonna, it's all going to be a big publicity stunt, though, that she's going to come out and say, ah, no, it was all just the big act. We're back together again. Or is it definitely no, I th over? No, I think it's over, and I think Roseanne's in a really healthy place, mm -hmm. you know, emotionally. And I think she's back on her feet. And, I, you know, I, I think she needed to... Kind of just spend some time on her own. Mm -hmm. You looking forward to going? You'll be working on it this yeah, season. Yeah, I'll be I working back it? a little later this season after uh -huh. I finish my tour. Uh huh. How do you? Uh, you uh, what kind of uh, feedback do you get from viewers on the show? For Roseanne? Yeah. I think that they're kind of intrigued by you know the, the possibilities of my character and all the different directions she's kind of gone in. And I think it's been really good for Mid America to see a character who's bisexual and not cliche. I mean, she's a crazy kind of kooky character. And right. it didn't fall into that real, like, okay, now we're going to make a big, heavy statement about mm. sexuality. Not your typical sitcom personality. No, I no, right. not yeah. at all. Uh, you know what you ought to do this season is do that lozenger thing. I'm going to. Huh? I'm going to start doing that on every show. <laughs> we're going to do a quick break. We'll be right back with Sandra Bernhardt. <laughs> My doctor says, don't have any fun. You can't have fun. No. Time. You can't get crazy. See, I have to be in control. And I like being in control. But you know, for one night, I'd like to see myself out of my head. Wouldn't you like to see me out of my head? Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be fabulous? I'm having a good time. What song is that? That's a kind of a hybrid of uh, the song from Jesus Christ Superstar and Manic Depression, Jimi Hendrix. We did like kind of a Vegas medley. Uh huh. It's from your new uh, CD. It's from the new CD. I actually want you to. Uh, I, I want to talk about that a little bit, but before we get to that, just real briefly, uh, are, are you and I going to make up? Aww. Come on! You need a mediator. I think you need like a middleman. I'm the guy. I'll get the phone right now. We can. Yeah. I can work this out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what what did she do that made? I just wonder what did she do that that it really upset you? Come on, Sandra. No, it's you know it's it's Rosh Hashanah. It's the new year. You don't, okay. I don't want to say anything okay. bad about anybody, okay. and you know God bless her. That's all. Uh, uh, was it that she killed your cat with a pointy bra? <laughs> <laughs> she yes. made she made you listen to the Dick Tracy soundtrack. I got a whole list of them That's right here. That's very funny, uh, actually. <laughs> That's good. That's uh, good. This is uh, the uh, CD that you were just talking about, uh, Excuses for Bad Behavior, Part 1. Right. Um, what's this title come from? It's kind of a tongue-in-cheek homage to Guns N' Roses' Use Your Illusion, Part 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, Rock what, the house. What is bad behavior? What kind of bad behavior kind are you referring just, you to? You know, well, I guess CNN, O.J. Simpson, you know, uh, all the tabloids, people mm. that shouldn't be in the public eye. What do you think about all that right now that's happening? Is I that... think it's really, I think it's a disturbing trend in American culture that's kind of filtering internationally. Mm -hmm. And I think we're headed in a really kind of disparate, isolated kind of way, you know? It, it makes, yeah, it's true. You know, I don't think it's particularly healthy for you to sit and watch, you know, hours and hours and hours of coverage of O.J. Simpson. I mean, I think it's like, we don't know what the man did, chances are, we do, but l let it be in the courts and let it be private, you know? I mean, it was a horrible thing, and I don't think we need to make spectacle of it, you know? I mean, can't there be, can't there be something in, in, in the American culture that, that's more enriching and, and, and more hopeful than that? I just, I just... I'm curious, what do you think's coming first? Is it people's need to have that kind of material come into their homes, or is it the media themselves that's pushing it into the people's homes? Well, I think homes? for certain segments of society, they dig that. They want to get out of their own problems and their own kind of depression, and it's always, you know, tempting to see somebody else's huge problems. It does take you out of it. But on the flip side, there's a lot of really intelligent people who would like to be informed about what's really going on in the world, and, and, and you know, maybe just a, a change of pace. Maybe something with a little bit of, you know, positivity. And so your music is going to deal with that a little bit. Music deals with a lot of those issues, yeah. Uh, did uh, Madonna always smell like a sweaty <laughs> NBA player? <laughs> 
She always watered down the good booze. Stop me when I hit one. <laughs> no. So, uh, at any rate, we're not going to touch on that. Are you going to play a song for us a little bit? Yes. Uh, what song um, are you going to do for us? Thank you. It's, um, it's one of the songs that I co-wrote. Um, it's called Lonely Town. We'll do a quick break and be right back with that after this. Morning for your first look at news, weather, and traffic, turn to News 36 First Cast. Here's a look at what else you'll see tomorrow morning. Hi, I'm Kathy Conley. Tomorrow on News 36 First Cast, sometimes people are faced with emotional problems when they have to deal with a loved one's terminal illness. Tomorrow, we'll tell you about a new program that can help you cope. Please join us at 6 o'clock. News 36 First Cast, tomorrow morning at 6.